Now we can perform operations on these vectors just like um, we, we've done before, okay? But it might, it might just look a little different, so I want to show you guys a couple of them. Okay, so for this first one, that's that number two right there, it's multiplying to the vector v, that's called a scalar, okay? And what a scalar does is it stretches out the vector, so it makes it longer. And so um, I, I guess I'm just going to write it like this, put the two there, and then I have my vector right here, which is uh, vector v. And you just multiply them both by 2. So you get negative 4 and then 10. So that's my new vector. Uh, the next one, you're going w minus v. So w is 3, 4. And we're subtracting negative 2 and 5. So we have to go 3 minus negative 2 and 4 minus 5. That's going to be my new vector. Add the opposite there, I get 5 right there, and I get negative 1. There's my new vector. <coughs> you guys got that so far? No, no questions? Okay, th this one right here, uh, you take the v, which is negative 2, 5. And we're going to add 2 times uh, the other vector, which is 3, 4. So this is the same as what we just did. I'm just kind of combining the two operations together. So that's 6, 8, and I have to add that to negative 2, 5. It's got to follow the same order of operations. It's got to do the multiplication first. So I add the 6 and the negative 2, I get 4. I add the 8 and the 5, I get 13. There's my new vector. I'm going to show this, these operations to you graphically which the book has, I just didn't want to like, I wanted to show you the algebra part first. Graphically, um, if we look at this, this right here is vector v. Let me, let me draw on it. So I'll draw it so it pops out. This is vector v. It's graphed, okay? Um, you see it's, it's in standard position. It starts at 0, 0, and it goes up to negative 2, 5. That is our vector, right? That's our vector, negative 2, 5, okay? If we were to multiply it by 2, it would double it. So I have two of them. So it doubles in length. Does it point the same direction? Yes. It just changed the length. So when you multiply it by a scalar, you're just stretching it out, essentially. I think the most interesting one is the subtraction. See, if I have uh, w, which is in standard form, or standard position, I should say, 3, 4. See, there's 3, 4 right there. And then I subtract um, negative... Uh, v, negative vector v, okay, the opposite of, uh, of v. Then I'm taking this line essentially and I'm going the opposite way. Whenever you do the negative of a vector, you do the opposite way. So if I was to do the opposite of this vector v, it would go this way. So it points the opposite direction. Whenever you do the negative of it, it points the opposite direction. So that's why this one is pointing down now. Oops, that's a nice straight line. It points down uh, to right there. And this vector right here is what we get we're going to get 5, negative 1. Isn't that what we got when we did it? No? Yes? And that's the vector. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm not going to explain the next one, uh, this one, because I think that if you understand these ones, then you get the gist. So i got to throw this up. It's in your book. Don't copy it, please. It's just a, a reminder or kind of like a, a cementing idea here um, that the vectors are going to follow all the same uh, properties that you guys know. Uh, you see this one right here? This is the addition, addition. What happens right here? The order changes, right? The order changes, and so that's the commutative property. The commutative property applies with vectors. You guys remember what this property is called? Associative. You see they're associating themselves with different people. Uh, see right here? The, the U and the V are associating themselves, and over here, the V and the W are associating themselves. It doesn't matter. If you change the order in which you do them, you're going to get the same result. That's known as the associative property. Here's the identity property of addition. Here's uh, an inverse property. You add the opposites together, you get zero. And these numbers right here, these are scalars. It's saying that it doesn't matter what order you multiply them together, you're going to get the same thing. And over here, you guys know what property this represents? The distributive property. Huh. So here we have scalars multiplying to a vector, and here we have a, a scalar multiplying to two vectors adding together. They follow the same properties as before, the distribution and all that stuff. It just might look a little different when you're actually plugging in numbers and such. I'm not quite sure why they have this here. 
Uh, when you multiply a scalar 1 to it, you get the same thing. It's like, yeah, duh. When you multiply a scalar 0, you get this uh, a 0. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. And this one right here, you guys remember what the double lines mean? Magnitude. magnitude. If you had a scalar multiplying to a vector, and then you find the magnitude of it, that would be the same as finding the magnitude first and then multiplying the absolute value of the scalar. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's just kind of formula stuff. And you don't really have to know this because I feel like you already do. You just have to practice. Mm 